Welcome to the 2020 App State Basketball Media Day. And uh, first off, we have head coach Dustin Kearns, who will give us an opening statement, and then we'll take questions. If uh, you have questions, just let us know in the chat, and I will call you out one by one. Coach? Uh, thanks, Joey. Uh, first of all, uh, good to see everybody. Um, we, we are just thankful uh, for Chancellor Everts and Doug Gillen for, for the opportunity to compete and play. You know, certainly the, that's not the case for every school in America. And so we're certainly excited um, and excited to, to, to go against somebody else here pretty soon and, and, and compete and play. And so first of all, I want to thank, thank those two. Um, I like our team. Um, I, I think we've got a really good competitive spirit to us. I think we've got really good chemistry. And I think you, we've got really good depth. Um, obviously, with the NCAA rules, we would have scrimmaged some, probably one or two people by now, at least one. And you got a chance to kind of adjust some things and see yourself against someone else. We haven't had a chance to do that. Never, no one else has. But um, we are um, approaching every day. Uh, you know, the, the, the one thing that I've, I will finish my statement with, uh, this is going to be an unpredictable season. And one like we've never, ever seen before. And so two things that I've really focused on with our team is, you know, control what we can control, and two, nothing will break us. Nothing will break us. And, and, and try to really have that mindset that uh, nothing's going to break us. And, um, and, and control what we control. Uh, that, that'll kind of finish my opening statement and uh, go from here. Um, I guess just as far as, you know, trying to guide – a group of guys through this. And I think I'm sure every coach has kind of had like very similar, but some differences to trying to help the team get to what eventually is going to be the start of a season, but how's this team kind of approached and reacted to all the uncertainty that's kind of come about as we're still kind of working toward a, a start date. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, it, it's been, it's been challenging. It's been challenging as a coach It's you know, it, it's, for, for any normal season, we would have had things planned out all the way up through our first game. We've taken a week-by-week -week approach. And, and, and so I've challenged our team just to kind of take a day-by-day -day approach um, because this, this can, can change daily, can change hourly. But for, for our staff, we've tried to take a week-by-week -week approach um, as far as, uh, you know, install, you know, defensively, offensively, those, those type of things. For our players – I've tried to keep it simple, but also, uh, you know, have them really focused um, on just the day-to-day -day approach because um, that's really all we can – you can really do it at this, at, you know, at this point. What's it been like just, you know, trying to navigate putting a, a non-conference schedule together? Because I know it's it's probably been some difficulties for everybody, obviously. But um, I remember, you know, at one point there was a, a Duke game that was on the schedule, and I'm sure that, you know, the decision the ACC has made probably affected that in some way. But just as far as piecing that together and what you guys announced today. Yeah, sure. You know, very challenging. And I think it's still ever going. I mean – I had a, a Big Ten school contact me this morning and said they are scrambling. So it, it is ever going for everybody. Um, and so I think that um, what we try to do is really focus on three things. The health and safety of our players. How can we limit travel? How can we stay here in Boone as much as possible? Um, you know, two, you know, how can we really challenge ourselves? And, and certainly we're going out and playing on the road at South Carolina State to open the season. Bowling Green, who will be picked, I think, to win the, the MAC. Tennessee and Auburn, Charlotte, um, you know, very, very good teams. And then also we, we look to the future. You know, this is going to be unpredictable. So, for example, um, Duke, um, we, we have a signed contract. That we will play Duke in the future. Uh, in, in August, when the NCAA made the decision to, to shorten our season by two weeks, the ACC put a game on our date. However, we talked to Duke about moving dates. But when they told me that absolutely no one would be in the stands, not even parents, I just thought it was, you know, the, probably the, the, the wise decision to let's, let's postpone that for a year. Let, let, let's get the full experience with that. And that's certainly, you know, what we want. Same thing with East Tennessee State. Great rival, team that just won 30 games, teams that – you know, we just played in Johnson City last year in front of 6,000 people. I have no idea what they would come here and play like. So, so let's 
postpone some of those just really great games for our players and fans into the future, stock some home games. We did the same thing with Hartford, stock some home games, and also, you know, just find a way to balance it out. So in the future, when we do get through this, um, you know, our scheduling will, will be a little bit more balanced. What do you think is, is uh, going to be something that stands out to people that watch the team this year, just as, as far as a difference or improvement from, from year one to year two on the court? Yeah, sure. I, I think that good days add up, all right? And I think that we've had enough good days around here that, that, I, that I feel like they'll add up. Uh, one thing that, uh, you know, I think will be a big step for our program is playing in the postseason. Obviously, we were very process-oriented. However, we were going to play in the postseason last year for the first time in 10 years. No one in America played in postseason, but, but playing in the postseason, whatever that is, obviously we want to play in the NCAA tournament. Um, but but, but let's, let's get that experience of playing in the postseason. Last year, our players that are here got the experience of winning, and they got the experience of playing in some big games and winning some big games and, and playing in front of great crowds here at the home center. So we, we were able to – to accomplish some things there. I do think, Ethan, that, that we, we have good size and length and athleticism and, and, and very good depth at this point, you know, um, you know, you know, certainly bearing any injuries or things, but we certainly, uh, we, we've got a mixture of youth and experience, um, but we do have some, some length and athleticism that, um, you know, certainly is, a, is, a, is attractive to a, to a viewer. All right, we'll take our next question from David Ware, 24-7 Sports. Justin, good to see you again. Um, you know, as you think about the whole COVID experience and, you know, uh, you get to learn from others, sometimes at, at others' detriment, honestly. You know, football's had some real some real travails this season, and, and I know you've probably spoken with Sean and kind of seen what they've gone through and understood how things have developed. How helpful is it to you uh, in, in as much as you can manage a situation like this to have resources like Sean Clark that you can go to and understand what they've done, what they've changed, what they've learned so that you can try to manage your program through your season? Sure. You know, I think experience is always the best teacher. And, and certainly Sean has provided some great insight. Um, as well as our medical staff, because they're dealing with it, and they're dealing with it for 100 plus kids. So they even have more challenges that, that we will face. Now we're being an indoor sport, and um, you know we don't have an offensive unit. Even, but but he has been very helpful, um, and just given some things to 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 think about from just maybe a travel standpoint, from maybe just a a practice standpoint, and so uh, that 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 certainly has been helpful and uh, because this is an ever going, changing, navigating deal. In terms of your roster this year, you know, you, you guys are introducing a lot of new parts into the system. Uh, you've got seven new guys coming in. I know you're still waiting to hear about Deshaun Parker and, and the possibility of his eligibility for this year, but you know, that's a lot of new pieces to integrate into a team that started building some chemistry and some camaraderie last year. Uh, and then you have the the unexpected absence of a lot of those guys for longer than you anticipated. As you've gotten back into to working together, how do you feel about the way that chemistry and familiarity is building between the new players that are in and some of the guys who had a year to work with you and kind of understand not only your system, but understand one another? Sure. And I think that, you know, you know in a weird way, uh, this summer with COVID, when our guys came back in July, they, they were they were quarantined in a way. They were um, spending a lot of time together in small groups in the weight room, small groups in the court. And so I think we were able to play catch up because it wasn't normal. It was more intimate. It was more smaller um, segments. And, and we've continued to do that. Uh, we, one day a week, we have a, a, a just a smaller six-person, seven-person practice. And so I think that um, we've done a lot of team-building activities. We've done a lot of, um, a lot of things to, to, to play catch-up, to your point. But there's the typical college experience um, 
has changed this year and it's changed in a way where I think it's almost made us closer and it's changed in a way where, you know, more guys are, 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 are hanging out with one another because we're in our own little bubble. And, 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 and so it's, it's an interesting question, but in a, in a, in an interesting way, I think it's, it's, it's allowed us to play catch up with, with those things. Turning to the way you're going to play the talent on the court, uh, you've got, you're replacing more than just the three seniors that were starters last year, but still those guys were very impactful. Isaac Johnson, O'Shawn Williams, Hunter Seacat, uh, influenced a lot of productivity on the floor uh, in terms of points, rebounds. They were all good passers. Um, you know, they were high impact players for you. Um, you never replace one person with another person because, you know, everybody's an individual. But as you, as you think about what they brought to the team last year and then you look at where you are with this year's squad, you know, how do you go about uh, enforcing to the guys on this year's team, hey, here are some of the things we've got to go find a way to manufacture again that these three players in particular brought to the floor every night. Sure. And I think that, um, you know, each team obviously takes its own form of identity and, and personality. And, um, you know, certainly O'Shawn Hunter and Isaac were, were huge contributors and had great seniors. But, you know, looking back, I, you know, I, I don't know if sitting here 12 months ago that O'Shawn Williams was certainly someone we were talking about a lot. And he was a guy that really bought into the process and, and, and um, uh, had just an incredible senior year going, I think, from four points to 13. It's the same kind of message to, to some of these younger guys. And, you know, you know what they've really uh, is, you know, hopefully in a program you get to a point where you've got good players graduating, you've got players stepping up and, and that have developed over the summer and, 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 and grown a little bit uh, physically and, 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 um, and personally and, and, and learned from those experiences. And I, and I think Donovan Gregory is one of those guys. He has been very, very good at this point. I think he's a guy that um, has, has really developed well. We, we redshirted R.J. Wilson, who and he's a guy that, um, you know, was able to sit back and watch and learn, but, but he got in our program. And so you, you just get guys to buy into the development and, um, you, you know, you show them, hey, listen, Hunter, Isaac, and, and O'Shawn statistically had the best season of the of best season of their career. And so uh, those are guys that, you know, we felt confident about the development and, and, the, and, and the, the way we used them. And so we take the same approach with some of these new guys um, and, and certainly some of the guys in our program. And, hey, now it's your turn to take a big step. Now it's your turn to, to learn from that. And, 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 and take a big step forward. Thanks, Dustin. Okay, next we'll go to David Rogers in Blowing Rock. Hey, Dustin, good to see you. Um, <clears throat> yeah. By my count, you've got about, well, probably five, between Huntley, James Lewis, Lushkoff, Duhart, and Kendall Lewis, you've got five guys that are six, seven or, or taller, including a couple that are pushing closer to seven feet. That's, and that may be the the tallest, uh, uh, the, the the largest number of, of tall guys. You mentioned the the length and the athleticism earlier, but how does that change what you're doing, um, uh, or does it change what you're doing in terms of style of play or um, uh, how you're how you're approaching this the season? Yeah, it doesn't really approach. Doesn't really change anything we're doing. It just is going to allow us to utilize a little bit more, hopefully more effectively. I mean, you you mentioned a guy like C.J. Huntley. He's got a seven four wingspan. You know, Sasha's at, at at seven feet as well. Kendall Lewis is already a a big wing uh, with with extreme length. Um, you know, Donovan Gregory's a long. He, he's he's got length. Um, you know, Xavier Brown is a freshman who's 6'3", but he's got a 6'7 wingspan. I mean, we, we just got – I just think hopefully we can use it a little bit more effectively, um, but it doesn't change what we do or, who you know, what we are. Well, mention, you know, I'm mentioning uh, Xavier Brown uh, from Sacramento, my, in my home state of California. Well, how, did, how did he find his way to, uh, uh, to Boone, North Carolina? COVID. Um, you know, I just think that, you know, that that, that was a point where uh, we were all adapting. March, whatever it was, we shut down. Recruiting shut down. And so um, we, we were doing a lot of 
you know, recruiting presentations via Zoom like we are now. And so no one was visiting campus and we weren't out visiting anybody. So we were turning over every rock in the country. And Xavion uh, was a guy that was presented to us. And ironically, he wanted to travel east, has some family in Greensboro, uh, just wanted to get away from home. He was someone that just really fit what, you know, we're about. And, and once again, anytime you call someone, you can call someone two hours from home. They might not want to go away from home. But this is a kid. He goes, I, I really want to get away from home. And it just really moved forward. And, and, uh, but I don't know without COVID, back to my point, I don't know without COVID that we maybe find him or he comes here because I think that he would have had the opportunity on the West Coast to be seen a lot more uh, by those schools. But he wasn't being seen out there either because no one was watching live. The uh, uh, locally, you've got Brian Green on your roster. Um, I know he was a, you know, more of a more of a uh, uh, support guy last year. How what what? How has he developed uh, over the summer and, and and into your program? Yeah, Brian's awesome, and and he he he's a a big part of our program. But his role has not changed. He's developed. He's gotten better, um, but he has a very valuable role. Uh, in the role that he serves for us, but um, he, he's a big part of what we do. Um, and, and he's certainly bought into that role. I think when you talk about roles, uh, one, you've got to define them, and then you've got to have players accept them. And then most importantly, you've got to have players fulfill them. Uh, Brian has done those things, defined his role for him. He's, he's accepted it and he's fulfilled it, but he's improved. Um, but I, you know, I think from, uh, uh, from a contribution standpoint, his role will be the same. One more question. Uh, uh, I see Frank Young on the uh, on the call uh, with us, and and I, I, the three point record setter, I believe, at, at West Virginia. Um, how is having a, 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 a individual of that stature in, in terms of three point shooting? How does that um, a, a impact your program? I guess. Yeah, well, well I first and foremost, we'll, we'll talk about Frank as a, as a person and a coach. He, he is an, he's a high-character person. He's a tremendous uh, mentor and, and leader uh, and representative for our program. He has had a, he's going to have a very bright future in coaching. He will be a head coach. He should be a head coach uh, at the Division I level. Uh, we're fortunate to have him, but he's our, he's our shooting coach. Um, if that helps with anything we have one shooting coach I don't want a lot of thoughts in guys heads about shooting I don't want you know it's just we just got one voice when it comes to that but more importantly than that he 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 does a lot of uh, uh, you know for for our program he at one point uh, we've been together now four years at one point he was the best player still in our program that has changed I think he'll probably tell you now that that's changed um, as well but, um, you know, certainly our first couple of years together, we always joked that he was still our, our best player. But, um, yeah, Fra Frank is a very valuable member to our program in this university and, um, you know, certainly uh, will be a future Division One head coach. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we'll go next to Silas Albright, the Appalachian. Uh, thanks for the time, Coach. I guess first, I just want to talk a little bit about Justin Forrest. Obviously, I think he was the first first team um, all Sun Belt player since like 14 or 15, but it's, it's been a while. Obviously, uh, your leading scorer returning for his senior season, just what can you say about um, the role you expect him to play and just who he is as a player? Yeah, so Justin had a really good junior year. You know, I think that, you know, but that as I've talked to him about it, that's over with. You know, now he's got a little bit more of a, um, you know, he's going to be the, you know, key key person in the scouting report. I think, you know, for him, um, he's got to continue to develop, you know, not turning the ball over as much. 116 turnovers was, is, is, is way too excessive. I, I do think having more depth uh, in the backcourt as well will help him with that. It also uh, help him – free up some opportunities to, to score, which is what he does really, really well. Uh, but I, I, mean, I certainly have talked to him about, um, you know, taking the same commitment that, uh, that he did last year with his body, improving. Um, and, you know, he's got to fall in love back with the basics uh, that he did last year and, um, and really 
you know, play with a chip on his shoulder to prove that he's first team all Sun Belt. You know, I, I do think that, and, and, and I think he would tell you this too, that one of the reasons he was first team all Sun Belt is we finished in the top half of the conference. Um, this league's got a really, lot of good, really good players and he's part of it, but now it's, you know, can, can he help us, can he, can he help us lead to more wins? Um, and, you know, and I, I, you know, certainly that's some of our conversations that we've had is, um, you know, being judged on, you know, wins and losses. Um, you know, last year was the first winning season he's been a part of, and hopefully he'll finish off his career with another one. But, you know, certainly that's, um, that those are the kind of messaging that I've uh, have said to him that, you know, that, that that's going to be part of his develop is to validate that he can impact winning. Gotcha. Um, so I guess next just kind of, um, so obviously you guys like O'Shawn and some other seniors graduated, guys that were kind of leaders for the program and, and um, had experience, got, got guys fired up. Who have you noticed this year kind of step into more of a leadership role? Um, yeah. Yeah, Donovan Gregory. Yeah, I think Donovan Gregory um, has, you know, really worked this offseason. Once again, I talked about team good days add up. I think that same thing for players, good days add up. And good days have added up for Donovan Gregory. Um, and and certainly he's he's really had a very good preseason at this point and hopefully it'll continue. And last year, you, you know, you, it was the, the the highs of the highs and lows of lows with the injury and then just, you know, you know, figuring out college basketball, but it's really slowed down for him. I think Kendall Lewis is a guy who who had a very good freshman year for us and ended up starting at the end of the year and 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 and, and that's part of his growth and development too. I think Adrian Delft's been very, very consistent so far this year. Um, and so really, you know, continue to expect things out of him. James Lewis has gained 25 pounds of muscle and really looks like, you know, he's just physically, you know, really improved his body and, and has really had a good preseason at this point. And, you know, the last returner, R.J. Wilson, is a guy we redshirted and, and – uh, you know, he's really had a, some really good days so far in the preseason well. So I think it's a little a combination of all, but, you know, I think certainly, you know, Donovan Gregory has emerged as a guy that's probably um, really changed his role in a good way. Uh, so last one for me, um, just kind of want to talk a little bit more about Kendall Lewis. He obviously had some like really impressive spurts last year. Um, I guess can you just talk a little bit about his offseason and how his game has developed since we last saw him? Sure. Uh, Kendall's another guy that, you know, has put a lot of work and, and improved his uh, perimeter shooting. And so I think you'll see that from him this year. And, and he's doing well. And I think that's part of his, you know, development. And, and, and we've certainly challenged him. I thought last year he was one of the best defensive perimeter players in the Sun Belt. And we've challenged him to try to be the best. Um, you know, he just, even as a freshman last year, he was starting to defend the opponent's best player and doing a really good job on them. And, and so really continue to take pride in that. I think he's, he's, he's also to this preseason rebounded well for us. He's been one of our top rebounders. He's certainly got the size, but also you, when you have guys on the perimeter and guards helping rebound the ball, it really helps you uh, take pressure off your quote, big guys to, to get every rebound. And so certainly, um, I think Kendall's, you know, role from a from a shooting and, and rebounding in both of those areas will really improve. I appreciate it. We'll finish off our questions for Coach Kearns today with Cameron Burnett from the Appalachian. Hey, Coach, thanks for your time. Uh, first thing I'm going to ask you, we talked about uh, Xavier, but also Mike Leeds. Those are two, from the outside looking in, someone might see them as high recruits. Talk to me about them. It hasn't been the same. You talked about not having scrimmages. How have you integrated them and what do you see from them and how quickly are you going to get them into the court and having a uh, real minutes on the floor? Yeah, Cameron, I think that, um, you know, Michael Leeds was a guy that uh, went back to his recruitment was rec highly recruited a guy we were trying to get up on campus, but, but he, he suffered an injury last August. Um, I certainly called him and his mom, told him that did not change anything the way we felt about him. And he called the next day and said, I want to visit. Um, and so we were fortunate to have him up uh, in, a, in a great atmosphere football weekend and, and, and certainly commit. He, he's a guy that, you know, he, he's got his own, they're all on different races, right? We, we always talk to him about that. They're all on different races that they're going to finish the race, but 
at some point during their four years. Some, some might be ahead of others at, at some point, but it doesn't mean the others won't catch up. You know, Eads is, 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 a, is a big guard. He can shoot the ball. Um, and he has had some really good days for us. But as far as integrating him and Xavier, I mean, we, we do that every day. Uh, we, we switch teams every day in practice to get them, um, you know, valuable experience and minutes, uh, but also get them playing with different lineups and teams to, to, to experiment and things. But, you know, along those, you know, C.J. Huntley is a guy that uh, is, is a really good player as well and, and, and it certainly emerges a guy that we feel like will contribute uh, you know, this year from that class. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll, and Michael Almonese, I mean, I haven't talked, he's a grad transfer. Michael Almonese is somebody that's new and R.J. Duhart. There are two guys that we expect those guys to contribute as well with what they've, uh, you know, been able to bring so far. Uh, David mentioned this earlier, but we're, you know, still waiting on a, a, a waiver, waiver for Deshaun Parker to play this year as well. And then uh, talking about uh, Sasha, of course, being the big 6'11 guy, uh, what have you seen out of him? Of course, you talked about uh, having a big shooting coach. Do you want him to be a versatile player who can go inside and out and just talk about his game? Yeah, so Sasha's a guy we signed late. You know, we, we, every, year, every year we want to uh, – we'd love to take a big guy in and, and really develop him. Last year we did that with R.J. Wilson. And I think that's, uh, once again, we want to be a developmental program. And we want to build a program, not a team. And so I think when you can get people that are really think the same way and bought into that, that's when you really get good. And so uh, initially when we, we took Sasha, he was a guy we were going to, you know, tuck away a year and, and, and really develop and get bigger and stronger. He's got to get stronger. That, that comes with our strength coach and nutrition. Um, but, but he's versatile. And, and so we like that anyway. He was a guy that, can step out and shoot to three. He's a guy that that has really good size. He's gained some good weight since he's been here, and um, and so certainly uh, for him, it'll be continue to be about development and, and weight room and things like that. But you know, certainly going to be a good player for us at some point. And then, uh, so you talk about how we have a lot of newcomers with the program now. Uh, how have you navigated? And have you put uh, in the COVID situation? Have you put trust in um, your older guys? to really help navigate getting the freshmen in, dealing with a pandemic like this? Sure. You know, I think that's, a, that's an interesting question, and I, and I really trust all of our players. You know, I, I think that we, we have constant communication with them. I think that they've uh, been very responsive and been leaders, have challenged them to be leaders on campus and in the community, <coughs> both out at Walmart or wherever that, wear a mask. And, and it, we talk, we call it an aquarium that people are watching and, and what are they seeing? And so I really trust all of our players to, to execute that, that game plan for not only our team, but themselves. And, and our guys have done a really good job. Um, obviously, this is an ever-changing thing and a daily thing, but I, I really have been really proud of our players and how they've you know, been responsive uh, to uncertain times as well. We're all adjusting, we're all adapting, and coaches, players, fans, and everybody. And so, um, it's um, – yeah, but I've been proud and, and, and trustworthy of all of them. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, that's all the questions we have for Coach Kearns today. Appreciate you, Coach. Thanks a lot. Appreciate you all. Thanks, Justin. And uh, we are fortunate to have the three assistant coaches of App State Men's Basketball. So we've got Patrick Moynihan, Bob Zorick, and Frank Young here. And uh, assistant coaches, if you could um, each give us a brief statement um, heading into year two. And then if there are any questions, let me know in the chat and I'll call on the reporters to ask questions. So Patrick, you can go up first. Hi, I'm Patrick Moynihan. Um, I just want to, you know, state that we're really excited about this year. Uh, we did, we made a great job um, of making a jump last year and having a winning season and hopefully we're, we're, we're planning on building on that. And uh, we're really excited about the group we have. All right, Bob. Yeah, good to see everybody. Uh, really excited for year two, excited to get things going here, like our group thus far and just trying to get better each day. Excited to see everyone here. Um, like Coach Zork and uh, Coach Moynihan both said, uh, we're excited about this group. 
a lot of new faces, a lot of new pieces to integrate. And um, like Coach Kearns has mentioned, we're trying to navigate um, this quote unquote new normal and just taking it day by day. But um, we like how competitive that practices have been on a daily basis. And we, we see that as a uh, potential good signs of, of a good team. So we're excited about moving forward. All right, thank you guys. We'll take our first question from David Ware, 24-7 Sports. Guys, I'll, I guess I'll just kind of ask this question of you collectively and, and let you figure out what order you're going to answer in. But, um, you know, having been at some practices and understanding a little bit about the way that you guys interact with the players, you know, typically when I see uh, drills, skill drills, types of things going on at practice, the, the fundamentals, the details, I see the three of you managing a lot of those processes with the players. And, you know, you're coming back from a situation where, uh, you haven't had them here uh, for as often or as long as you normally would have. And, and that really put a lot of responsibility on each player while he was at home. Um, probably not happy about it, but that's kind of where we all were. And they had to really kind of manage themselves, just, just like they managed their academics. They had to manage their diet, uh, their workouts, their skills, all those things they could work on individually. As you got them back to campus and started working with them again, you know, how did, you, how did each of you, relative to the disciplines that you're responsible for, for teaching them, how did you feel like they came back as a group? And, uh, you know, did you have to play, you know, much catch up when it came to teaching your specialty? Um, well, uh, I think everybody was put in a tough situation where with the shutdown that really nobody was able to get to a gym. And so everything they were doing was kind of on their own. But we have a great group of guys. Uh, we really believe, I mean, they love the game. And so when they have the opportunity to get to a gym or get to a hoop, they're going to go try and they're going to try and do their best to better themselves every single day. Um, there is a, you know, a challenge in pushing yourself over being pushed by a coach. But I do believe our guys did an excellent job of pushing themselves each day, every day, during that time period. And so when they came back, uh, you know, they, they were rusty, but um, we, we continued to build on what they had. Yeah, I'll just add that, um, you know, during the quarantine when they weren't here, uh, all of us, the whole, entire staff was, was checking in on all the players um, on almost a daily basis just to see you know, what they were eating, what kind of conditioning they were getting in. Um, they didn't have access to a gym where they finding ways to uh, find a, a court outside somewhere. You know, do they have a, you know, were they handling the ball outside in, in the driveway or in the street in, the, in their neighborhood? Just, just finding different ways to better themselves in that day. You know, er everybody was was thrown a curveball and, and didn't have the same amount of resources, but there's still different ways that you can try to um, find ways to get better on a daily basis. And so the, the guys came back, like uh, Pat said, they had some rust, but um, it, it wasn't as bad as, you know, some people may anticipate. Um, and they we were able to integrate our fundamentals and our core values um, pretty quickly with them because they, they were able to pick up on it, you know, pretty quickly. There's nothing else for me to add. <laughs> thanks for the uh, thanks for the input, Bob. Um, <laughs> it, it, kind of moving uh, as well in in this you know kind of Zoom world we live in. Let, let's talk a little bit about recruiting. Um, obviously, Dustin kind of hit the the fact that you know we can't be out. There aren't events taking place as they normally would, and you're having to manage relationships you know virtually now. <clears throat> Um, and, and talking a lot with the football staff, I know that they, you know, they really did a good job of embracing kind of that reality, whether they wanted to or not. And, and you know, they actually have had a, an incredibly successful uh, early commitment class for, uh, for 2021. You know, as you guys have had, and, and basketball is different, okay? You know, there, there, there are a lot of nuances that, are, that make basketball unique, primarily events, summer events, AAU ball, whatever it is that football doesn't have, you know, that, that really you guys count on uh, to make personal evaluations. So, you know, how have you adjusted to kind of where you are 
and, and what do you think that means for this upcoming recruiting class realizing, hey, we're not going to have the exposure we would normally have? Yeah, I think uh, I can go first there and just add that um, with us just having to watch film, um, I think we have to increase the amount of film that we watch because there's nothing like watching a kid in person and really you know, studying their game that way uh, from being on the road recruiting versus watching film. And so we'll, we'll start with the highlight tape and then we'll, like the highlights, we'll gather a lot of game film from their coaches. And I think with this year and us not being able to go out on the road recruiting, um, we're just having to gather even more game film this year than we would gather in years prior um, because we watch a couple of games. If we really like them, then we'll head out and go watch a, a high school game. But since that's not going to be the case this year, I think we're just going to um, you know, follow kids that we're recruiting all throughout the year and just continue to, to monitor them and just watch game film after game film after game film and just keep building that relationship with them um, just to make sure that they're, they're the type of kid and the right fit for us on and off the court. Yeah, I think the off the court piece is probably the one that um, gets least talked about because you don't get a kid on campus for them to feel it. You don't get to see them interact with parents in person in the home visit, um, interact with our team. And so you're trying to disseminate information through a computer and get them to understand what this is like, paint a picture for them, but also on your end, try to understand what they're going to look like fitting into that picture. Um, both from a player standpoint and a person standpoint. And that's so critical for us, the, the, the person element. I think uh, a lot of it has, we've had to get creative because again, like Coach Zort said, you're usually getting a kid on campus. Uh, you're usually sitting down in their living room, getting to know their friend, like just building those relationships in person. So. I think we've done as a staff a good job of, of being creative and, and really painting that picture that is App State and representing what it is and how special it truly is up here. Thanks, guys. All right, in the interest of time, if we'll go to Ethan Joyce for one question, and then we'll go to Silas Albright for one question, and then we'll turn it over to players after that. Ethan? I was gonna try to ask one about all you guys, but Frank, I got one specifically for you. Um, just as far as 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 Kendall um, trying to help him evolve a, as a as a shooter, um, he definitely showed some flashes on the court last year. But I know, like especially long range shooting, wasn't necessarily something he was confident in. Um, just as how do you kind of go about building up a guy's confidence and and you know trying to help make them successful and and better in in that part of the game at the same time? Well, me and Kendall sat down and we we kind of. Uh, broke down his shot and just see, try to try to look at what needed to improve or what needed to change to make his shot better. And so once we identified that, those those couple of things that need to change, we we made some notes and some bullet points and says, you know, when you're in this situation, you need to do this. When you're in this situation, you need to do this, just to create some, some, some consistency for him. And then the confidence came in the work that he put in. And so he, he did a good job after the season of getting in the gym, getting up shots and just shooting on the gun and just shooting hundreds of shots a day. And then as he kept doing that, he kept seeing the ball go in the basket more and more, which allowed him to gain his confidence. And then he was, a, he was able, he was one of the few that were able to get in the gym during quarantine while he was back home. And so that allowed him to continue his development with his jump shot. And so he's come back and his, his, his jumper is uh, much more consistent and, and much better. And that, that should be a big boost for us um, collectively, but also for him individually um, to help us moving forward this year. All right, Silas. Oh yeah, so this is, I guess, probably all three of y'all might have input, but so y'all are obviously with Dustin at Presbyterian. You, travel, you came with them here, so you, you guys have worked with them for a while help turn around the program at Presbyterian in just two years, kind of on the on that same track here with the successful first year last season. Just, I guess, what can you guys say about, I guess, Kearns as well as y'all's um, coaching philosophy and what makes kind of um, that so effective at, at 
turning around programs that hadn't had much success before. And Well, I'll, I'll say with Coach Kearns is his attention to the culture and the amount of time that we put in the culture building is what is a big piece that goes to us being successful on the court. Um, if we're not, he always says, if we're not right off the court, there's no way that we're going to be right on the court. And so we do a lot of team building. We do a lot of relationship building. We do a lot of team meals. Um, we do a lot of activities to get to know each other as a staff and just as a team. Um, and we, we do a lot, spend a lot of time of uh, putting our core values in place and making sure that those guys know those core values and they're living by those core values and our standards that we, um, that we, that we try to adhere to within this program. And so we, we spend a lot of time on those type of items just to make sure that, you know, the, the entire team is together, they're connected and they're right mentally to be able to go and perform on the floor uh, when it comes to game time. I would add to that uh, recruiting. Um, coach knows the type of player he wants. Um, he knows what type of kid he wants. And so he recruits to our culture. And so, you know, when we brought kids into PC, they fit our culture. And so we feel like the kids we brought here also fit our culture as well. And so, um, you know, they're, they're, they're going to connect. And so they're coachable and they learn. And, and so, I think the recruiting side of things, coach is very specific with what he wants and um, that helps with the program building as well. I would add, you know, I think every day he wakes up, his goal is to pull greatness out of individuals in the program, be that staff or players. And sometimes that approach is different depending on the individual. Um, and from his standpoint, your, your best leaders are phenomenal listeners and his impact in the community here on campus in town um, stems from his ability to listen. So um, we are better because of him and how he operates. All right. Thanks much coaches. Appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks guys. Next we'll turn it over to a couple of our players. We have junior Adrian Delph sophomore Kendall Lewis. So if, once again, you'll let me know in the chat that you've got questions. And it looks like first up is Ethan Joyce, Winston-Salem Journal. Hey guys, um, I guess, you know, for both of you, how have all these new pieces kind of challenged you guys um, as the team's really kind of starting to come together these last couple months and get closer to the start of the season? Um, I feel like uh, our team last year, the returners that came back from last year, we have to use our experience and install it into the new people and just help them tag along onto what we're building. And like that goes with teaching them and in, in practice and everything and just helping them stay focused and know what's going on. Cause we, we was there, nobody last year knew the system and we all had to learn it. So we just helping them learn it just like we had to. I guess going off that, Kendall um, was asking Frank just kind of about um, what goes into becoming a better jump shooter uh, for yourself. And he said you guys kind of went over your shot pretty extensively and kind of came up with some notes. What were, what were some of those changes you had to make to try to make, you know, a more consistent jumper for yourself coming into this season? Yeah, it was mainly just really a confidence thing, like getting the reps that I needed and the reps brought confidence because – I got to just trust in my work and trust that the reps I'm putting up, I'm going 100% every time. So in the game, it just feels like a, another shot. Adrian, Coach mentioned um, Donovan was a, is a guy that's really kind of stepped up, I guess, over over this, you know, these last few months. You, what have you seen from him just as far as making that step up and trying to, you know, maybe have more of a voice on this team and, and you know, kind of take some more responsibility? Uh, yeah, uh, Don is really, you know, he's really been, you know, going at it in practice every day, you know, just working hard every rep. So, I mean, he'd be a big piece for us this year. Thanks, fellas. Thank you.
All right, we'll take our next questions from David Ware, 24-7 Sports. Hey, guys, good to see you both again. Um, I asked the assistants about this, and I'd be interested to maybe hear from each of you. You know, when you're at, when you're at home, away from school, away from the coaches, you know, uh, the responsibility for staying sharp, for improving your skills, for doing the right things, you know, academically, workouts, diet, all that stuff, it all fell on you guys. What were some of the things that each of you did during that time while you were away from Boone to maybe, you know, try to help keep yourself disciplined and, and make sure that you did the right thing so that when you came back, you were ready to hit the ground running? Uh, just knowing how important it is to keep uh, keep your reps up and just keep working because, like, it's you're never supposed to stop working. And so – that's always been instilled for me since I've started playing basketball. So that wasn't a problem to keep working out. And the main thing I had to focus on was the diet because I got to start taking that more serious. And just Coach Glass used to send us work, was sending us workouts and we were doing Zoom workouts. So that time kept, it kept us disciplined in a way. And just we had to hold each other accountable sometimes. Like, did you get in the gym? And just check up on each other. But it was pretty easy. It wasn't that hard. Yeah, and really just, you know, doing anything just to keep yourself in shape, you know, just for we do, when we do come back, we can be ready to go. Questions for you individually. Adrian, you know, you, ever since you arrived, you've been a guy who's been looked at as, as a, a scoring threat. Um, and you've had some games where you've been really explosive, putting the ball in the basket. And, you know, I think with everybody, you know, when you come in and you start developing yourself as a player, gaining consistency um, and whatever role is defined for you is, is always probably one of the bigger challenges. You know, when it, when you, when you look at ahead to this year and, you know, um, O'Shawn's gone. So there's some, some point production, especially from the perimeter to be replaced there. You know, what are the keys for you, do you think um, to, you know, to kind of step in and become more consistent from night to night as a scorer on this team? Um, mostly just by my teammates, you know, they, do a good job, you know, finding open shots. And, you know, I just play hard and try to do whatever I can on defense. And hopefully, I mean, I turn up on the offensive side too. Kendall, for you, um, you know, it, you're a really explosive player as well, defense, offense. You like getting out in the open floor and running, and that's really a strength of yours. You know, as you think about what you really want to improve on going into the season, what are the biggest things for you that you really want to achieve individually, understanding that that's going to help the team? Uh, mainly just slowing down and understanding the game. That's what the coach has been really preaching to me lately. Because I got the, I'm a play hard, and now I just got, now I just got to know the game and know what I'm doing. And they've been talking to me in practice, telling me what I could have did and what I did right, and it's been helping me a lot, like watching film, seeing what I could have did and just applying that in the next practice and just keep getting better every day. Thanks, guys. Okay, we'll go next to Silas Albright, the Appalachian. Oh uh, Yeah, so obviously the new schedule non-conference came out today. Just what are y'all's thoughts on um, and how much are y'all looking forward to those um, games with the big SEC opponents, Auburn and Tennessee, and what it will be like to be on that stage? I'm really excited looking forward to them, but we got to treat every game the same. We can't prepare better for one game better than we did for another game. We just got to treat every game the same. Take it one game at a time, and we're going to look good. Um, and then I guess uh, just can you talk a little bit about the, what the chemistry is like on the team and uh, how close you guys are, like what the camaraderie is like in the locker room? Uh, I think the chemistry pretty good. You know, we – uh. We all pretty close, stick together, you know, and I think that translates on the court a lot, especially when we're in practice. We compete with each other, you know, we just make each other better. That's all I have. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, we have time for one question from Cameron, and then we'll move along to the next two players. Okay, so we talked about how you guys have been uh, – home a good bit. So with a lot of newcomers, that's, create, that's created a different dynamic with how you guys have been able to build that chemistry that Silas asked about. So um, what connections have you guys made, especially now being back in Boone with some of those young guys? And do you have any specific relationships you'd like to speak on? Uh, well, when we were back in Boone, we went on a few uh, team bonding trips. I heard them talk about that. And like those little trips like that really helped us 
bond a little bit. But like the uh, soft, some of the the sophomores stay in the same dorm as the uh, the freshmen. So we're seeing them every day and we talking to them, telling them how how workouts going for them. And so we really connected. The quarantine really brought us closer because we was all together all the time. So it really helped. All right, thank you guys. Appreciate your time today. Thank, thank you. you. We'll go ahead and get the next two guys in here. As soon as they settle in, we should have senior Justin Forrest and sophomore Donovan Gregory. And uh, whoever has a question first can actually go ahead and jump right in. Uh, so I guess first off, just Justin, obviously last year, First team all Sun Belt leading scorer on the team. You're back for your senior year. Uh, what are your goals and I guess what are your expectations? Uh, I would say my goals for this year is, you know, just keep being a team player and uh, continue to do whatever I can to help my team win. Uh, those all achievements came from my teammates pushing me and my coaches pushing <laughs> me and helping me get to a level that I needed to get to and them just keep telling me that it's another level that I can get to this year. So I'm um, just looking forward to put another winning season together with my teammates. Uh, Don, Coach Kearns kind of asked or talked about you kind of as a guy that has stepped up into kind of like a leadership role over the summer. Is that something that you uh, wanted to do or just can you talk a little bit about how that happened? Yeah, I mean, all of it is really just a process. Just coming from last year, I just learned from a lot of things and the coaching staff, my teammates, they never lost confidence in me. and. It just allowed me to just become more of a leader within this team, just coming back, helping the younger guys out with everything that's new to them, that was just all new to us last year. So I'm just in a position where I can just help them out more and just step up and be a leader. Actually, appreciate it. All right. Hey, hey, guys. hey guys, you guys have a lot more, I think across the roster, a lot more size and length this year. Uh, what's it what's it gonna be like to have to have all the, the, the giants uh, out there with, on the court with you? Um I think just the size will help us um on the defensive end uh with the defense the type of defense that we play um I think it'll help that as well. I think our numbers will be hopefully they'll be better than they were last year. Um but I think it's just another asset to our team to how good we can um, how good we can be this year. Any more questions for these two? All right, if not, appreciate you guys coming by. Thanks Thank for your you. patience today. And that'll be a wrap on the 2020 App State Men's Basketball Media Day.